Um, at first, I should start with, uh, I want to introduce you the place where I'm working. Um, it's uh, the Scientific and Practical Center of Traditional Medical Systems uh, of the First State Moscow Medical University. And uh, so the main purpose of our center is to integrate methods of traditional medical system in the Russian healthcare system. Um, I have a few time, that's why I wouldn't read uh, slides. You can see it, uh, it's the objectives of the, our center. So um, our main, main purpose is to promote the knowledge of uh, traditional medical systems in Russia. And uh, we have different ways of cooperation and we cooperate, um, we have a lot of cooperation and collaborations with the universities, scientists, uh, researchers, doctors and other specialists of traditional medical systems. And here you can see ways of our cooperation with them. And also we have um, Association of Medical Anthropology. Uh, see, uh, here you can see our site. Um, president of our associations is Valentina Haritonova. She is a doctor of historical and anthropological sciences. And we have also journal, uh, Medical Anthropology and Bioethics. And here you can see my last interview with uh, Dr. Lapsantin Ragdo. It's you. Uh, English version. <laughs> English version will be later, uh, as always. So also you can visit our site and our journal. We will be happy to have your articles in that journal. And so I'll start about Tuva. Okay. Uh, I will read sometimes because I have very few time. I'm sorry about it. Uh, so the Republic of Tuva is located in the central part of the Asian continent. Uh, its total area is about 170,000 square kilometers, of which 82% uh, are mountains. The Republic spans three climate zones, the dry steppe uh, Tuvinska, semi-arid Upsunurska on the border of Mongolia, and uh, taiga covered Totonska and Terekhoyska areas. This varied climate results in a diversity of soil and vegetation cover, promoting development of traditional Tibetan medicine in the Republic. Plants uh, growing at high attitudes under rich insulation tend to accumulate more biological active compounds than their peers in the valleys. This situation was found to be important to the oriental medicine theorists and practitioners. Uh, uh, researchers uh, identify several periods in the development of medicine in Tuva. Uh, the first period uh, was a period of nomadism where folk medicine and magical medical practices dominated. Tribes inhabiting the territory of modern Tuva were treated with livestock products, used various organs and tissues of wild animals and birds, as well as medical plants growing on the territory of the Republic. Uh, the tribes inhabiting Tuva became familiar with Buddhism teaching, teachings at the beginning of the uh, 12th century. However, the expansion of Buddhism in the region is associated with power of Mongols who adopted Tibetan Buddhism. Archaeological studies in the central part of Tuva confirm existence of the Buddhist temples, pagodas and chapels all across its territory dated the 13th, 14th centuries and built up the canons accepted in Mongolian Empire. Along with Buddhism, Tibetan medicine comes to Tuva uh, in the uh, 17th century. By the beginning of the 20th century, this region numbered nine kures. Kure is uh, in Tibetan temple, Buddhist temple. In 1926, there were 26 kures and around 4,000 lamas on the territory of Tuva. In the monasteries, Tibetan language reading uh, and writing, linguistics, and also Tibetan medicine were studied. After four years of studying, of books of Tibetan medicine, students became doctor of Tibetan medicine. Uh, so after four years of studying Tibetan uh, four books of medicine, students become doctors of Tibetan medicine, MG. Uh, in traveling notes of ethnographist Turchaninov, it is noted that Lama MG studied also in Mongolian educational institutions. Western medicine was not known in Tuva almost until the end of 19th century. The first people knowledgeable of urine medicine were Russian travelers and researchers who carried during their journeys first aid kits with medications. Uh, researchers note that no Russian or European medical practitioner had visited Uranhai Krai, Tuva, before 1913. 
The first clinic was opened in, on April in 1913 with the arrival of Anna Mikhailovna Safyanova, a graduate of the medical department of Tomsk University. She became the head of Turansky Medical Station, the first European type local medical institution. The next phase in the history of healthcare in Tuva started in 1928. So, um, yes. Um, the next phase in the um, history of healthcare in Tuva started in 1928 with the resolution of healthcare commissariat of the Russian Soviet Federal Socialist Respo Republic to send a brigade of doctors to the Republic to provide medical services to local residents and later building comprehensive healthcare systems. The situation with traditional Tibetan medicine uh, specialists also started to change at that time. During the first years after the revolution, the first constitution of Tuva People's Republic declared freedom of uh, religion, which increased the number of monasteries. Only 22 monasteries operated in Tuva before the revolution, but many more hurrahs were built later. In absence of the Euro um, European medicine, treatment and di disease prevention functions were mainly performed by lamas, healers uh, living in the monasteries. The number of such healers uh, can be estimated from the fact that out of the 33 delegates representing all Hures of Tuva on the Lama Congress, nine were empty Lamas. Since 1930, uh, the situation in the Republic uh, started rapidly uh, transform. In October 1930, the seventh Congress of the Great Hural of Tuva passed the Republic's fourth constitution, which proclaimed socialist development of the country. According to the document, Lamas, Shamans, and Orthodox priests lost their electoral rights. Um, religious leaders were persecuted in Tuva, and out of 2,200 lamas in Tuva in 1930, only 594 survived by 1936. Uh, but uh, the next stage of the healthcare system in Tuva uh, can be attributed to the, the beginning of the 1980s, okay, characterized by national and cultural revival. Uh, so currently, the interest in traditional Tibetan medicine in the Republic of Tuva is growing again. Now in Tuva, uh, Tibetan medicine exists in two versions. First uh, is one is traditional Tibetan medicine, the way it's taught in specialized educational institutions at Hures, and most often doctors uh, practicing traditional Tibetan medicine graduate from medical and astrological college and Harmsal. Uh, to some extent, this kind of Tibetan medicine uh, seems to be open to the use of modern biomedical developments. Uh, while maintaining its holistic approach, uh, uh, the traditional Tibetan medicine has acquired some reductionist aspects of modern biomedicine. This is especially visible in the doctor's vocabulary. They use uh, nature of disease to the patients in modern biomedical terms. Uh, the second uh, option of Tibetan medicine existing in the area is more appropriately called Tuva Tibetan medicine, and it's related to the continuous transfer of uh, traditional Tibetan medicine knowledge in Tuva since Thank 18... Thank you very much. Uh, okay. Lack of time? <laughs> I'm so sorry, I just I, I have to control your time. Please, if you have a question, please, one question. Okay. We don't have any time. Um. <coughs> Maybe next, I don't know. We'll get yeah. here. If you have, we have, you know, so okay. time, please. Okay, I'll show you pictures. <laughs> please, if you, if you have a question. This is what we found there in Tuva, in some monasteries. Uh, this is Homosh Kukinden Surun. He was dead uh, during the revolution, but his uh, uh, children. Now, now you have any systematic uh, mechanism to develop the system, uh, the systematic education institution, research institution, and other things for uh, so I call Tibetan medicine in Tawa? Uh, now. Uh, now they are teaching in the, they have two lines. Uh, first line, they're teaching in the Hansal, or maybe in Mongolia sometimes, and they come there, uh, come back home, and uh, 
work in Korea. And second, it's, uh, I, I didn't, uh, I can't tell you about it, but it's um, in these uh, monasteries, there is continuous line from 19th century, and they also practice uh, line of their teacher. Okay, thank you. One more question, one more, only one more. Uh, I, I want to ask, uh, this is, uh, the name of this uh, medicine system, uh, medical system, Tuvina Tibetan medicine? Or? Uh, I don't think that it's a, a re medical system. It's like a branch. We should call it Tuvina Tibetan medicine, for example, because it's a variant of Tibetan medicine which uh, exists in Tuva. But I call only this continuous line Tuvina Tibetan medicine because, for example, they adopted their medicines in uh, Tuva. And so we can talk that it's uh, other variant of, Tuvina, uh, of Tibetan medicine there. And, they, uh, what uh, textbooks uh, the doctors <coughs> use in the work? They work all, all fundamental uh, textbooks like uh, we use it in Tibetan medicine, all the same. Thank it's you. the same base. Theoretical base is the same. Only medicine changing. On text. Uh, uh, Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Please, next. Thank you very much. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> you have time to, to share your knowledge. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You.